Okay, now let us consider uh, a temperature Th instead of that standard value 290 Kelvin. And in that case, let us see what happened SNR how to uh, calculate. So, SNR at the output this is equal to P s divided by k into T s plus f minus 1 T naught into B n. So, the first term this is due to this host temperature T s and the second term this is due to the effective noise temperature T e. So, if I uh, now assume that T s equal to T naught in that case P s by k into T naught f b n. So, sometimes we simply write down that S n r at the output this is equal to P s by k T naught f b n, but that happens only if T s is equal to T naught. And if this host temperature is different than that 290 Kelvin or T naught. So, we have to use this correction factor and uh, this overall expression we have to consider the effect of T s as well as T e separately. So, considering a scenario like that we can calculate the we, we can define a parameter which we call the operating noise factor n o p. So, how we do it operating noise factor of a combined system including the source and the receiver is the ratio of the actual available output noise power density which is given by n o a to the available output noise power density if the receiver had no internal noise source. So, that means in this case what we will be doing? We are considering actual temperature not T naught. So, T s and then calculating what is the available noise power density at the output. And in the second case again we are uh, recalculating it, but we are assuming the receiver itself is noiseless. Then what is the effect of that left hand side noise and how it is being transferred to right hand side? Then we take the ratio. So, it is given by F O P this is equal to N O A which is the available output noise power density. So, it includes both the contribution from left hand side and due to the receiver itself and divided by G A K T S. So, G A K T S you see here we did not consider any internal contribution of noise. So, this is only uh, due to the left hand side. So, F O P it takes into account the actual source temperature T s. So, why we are doing it? Because let us say uh, you have designed the receiver, you have the noise figures or let us say noise factor whatever specified by manufacturer that is for a standard value 290 k. And now for your system which may be it, it may operate uh, let us say for space application, it can operate at minus 50 minus 60 Kelvin minus 50 minus 60 degree centigrade. So, or it can be uh, at very uh, high temperature scenario. So, for that case you recalculate what is the SNR for your receiver chain. So, then SNR at the output this is equal to the uh, G A P S this is the output power divided by output noise power we are expressing it in terms of F O P. So, then this is equal to simply F O P G A K T S into B n over a ba noise bandwidth B n or G A cancel out. So, P S by F O P K T S B n. Now, P S divided by K T S B n. So, this K T S B n this is actually the noise present at my left hand side of the receiver over a bandwidth B n. So, simply then P s divided by K T s B n this factor we can call S n r at the input side. So, we can simply write down F operating that is equal to S n r at the input divided by S n r at the output not at 
to a standard temperature, but at any given temperature. So, that is how we can define another parameter a operating noise op no operating noise factor. So, now in presence of receiver noise in internal in the previous one when we calculated k uh, we put simply k T s b n here we did not consider effect of internal noise generated inside the receiver. Now, we are introducing that in that case f operating this is equal to n internal plus. So, this you see noise factor this is S n r i by S n r o. So, in terms of noise simply then we can write down noise at the output divided by noise at the input. So, noise at the output this is G A K T S plus the internal noise divided by noise at the input G A K T S. So, this is 1 plus T E by T S where we are putting n internal equal to G A K T E. Now, already we have seen that T E in previous expression T E equal to f minus 1 into T naught. So, we can also express f operating that is equal to 1 plus we are simply just putting the value of T e in the previous expression. So, f minus 1 into T naught by T s. In this expression it simplifies to f or f operating it becomes simply f only when T s is equal to T naught. Also we have seen it previously you see it simplifies to this S n r at the output in this expression it simplifies to k t naught a b n only when t s is equal to t naught. For this case also f operating is equal to f that specified only when t s equal to t naught otherwise not. So, now let us say t s is not equal to t naught. So, then we have to consider all the effects of T s T e and T naught is already given or specified for the components whatever we are using. So, so many noise temperatures we have to deal with. We can simply eliminate T e by introducing one more new parameter. So, define a system noise factor n system to eliminate T e for simplification. So, f system how we are defining f system that is equal to T s plus T e by T naught. So, putting the value of T e here f system this is f minus 1 plus T s by T naught or we can write down then S n r at the output that is equal to P s divided by f system k T naught P n. You compare this expression with the previous one for a noiseless receiver. So, for noiseless receiver S n r at the output is it is uh, equal to P s by this factor, but here this is P s by f system not f operating if we have a noisy receiver which is the practical scenario. So, f system where it is related to f o p by f o p into T s by T naught. So, if uh, we know f value given for T naught then we can easily calculate f system from this expression f o p into T s by T naught. Now, noise figure for a cascaded system we already calculated equivalent noise temperature for a cascaded system. Now, we are going to calculate a uh, noise figure or noise factor for a cascaded system. So, basically overall S n r calculations we can use any of these two approaches noise figure approach or noise temperature approach. Noise temperature approach already we know now we are going to see the noise figure one. So, we are considering a simple scenario we have let us say just two amplifiers in cascade. 
it can be any other components also simply we uh, want we, we have to calculate its gain the first one let us say gain is g a 1 and it is providing some internal temperature n internal 1. So, if I express in terms of noise temperature you remember we expressed it by T e 1 then n internal 1 that is equal to k T e 1. The second component it is G a 2 gain and internal noise generated n internal 2. So, <coughs> n 1 whatever falling on left hand side to the second component. So, this is the output noise power from the first component. So, if I now first uh, consider a noiseless component that means, n internal 1 or n internal 2 is 0. In that case, n 1 this is equal to then n i multiplied by gain of this amplifier. So, that is the noise available at the output we consider a noiseless system. So, that output is falling on the second amplifier. So, n 1 equal to g 1 g a 1 n i. Similarly, n 2 equal to g a 2 n 1 that is equal to g a 2 g a 1 n i. Now, let us consider the effect of n internal 1 and n internal 2. So, considering noise introduced by the elements n 2 that is equal to n internal 2 plus g a 2 multiplied by whatever noise coming from left hand side n internal 1 plus g a 1 n i or we can write down this is equal to then n internal 2 plus g a 2 into n internal 1 plus g a 1 k t naught. So, n i we are representing by k t naught. Then the standard cascaded noise factor this is also the freeze formula the second form for noise factor f equal to n 2. So, output noise power divided by g a 2 g a 1 k t naught. So, you can we can now put the values here n 2 already we calculated in the previous one n internal 2 plus g a 2 n internal 1 g a 2 g a 1 k t naught divided by g a 2 g a 1 k t naught. So, if I consider the first two terms n internal 1 and g a 1 k t naught. So, g a 2 this is cancel out and sorry this is for the we are considering this sorry second and third term. Now, if I consider the first term n internal 2 with that we are simply adding and subtracting g a 2 k t t naught. So, original term is n internal 2 then plus minus g a 2 k t naught divided by this. So, it simplifies to f 1 n internal 1 plus g a 1 k t naught by g a 1 k t naught this is f 1 plus f 2 minus 1 by g a 1. So, this is for a two component system if we have n number of components it you can simply add other terms. So, then the third term it will be f 3 minus 1 divided by g a 1 g a 2. Similarly, you can define it for nth number of term. So, again what we see that uh, the contribution of first component it becomes very important. So, for all other components it is being divided by the gain of uh, the other components preceding components. So, that is why whenever we use an amplifier it should be a low noise amplifier just immediately after the antenna to decrease the overall noise figure of the receiver. So, 
So, now we learn how to calculate the overall noise figure of a uh, receiver, noise factor of a receiver and if we simply uh, convert it to um, decibel scale, then we will call overall noise figure of the receiver. So, it will determine the noise floor below which the, uh, the receiver it cannot detect any noise power, uh, any signal power. So, minimum S n R that should be higher than this. Also, uh, we have uh, we learned what is linked margin. So, this value is uh, not sufficient for any uh, wireless system. So, above that we have to uh, maintain a link margin of 3 dB to 10 dB for. Now, let us take one example numerical with numerical values. Let us say one antenna it is directly pointing towards earth. It, uh, it can be a radiometer itself this uh, whole receiver chain together with antenna. So, in uh, radiometer applications it is actually one type of passive imaging what is done simply the power whatever radiated by earth surface it, it, it is collected uh, by antenna and then it is converted to some effective noise temperature. And now, if we point towards different direction, so depending on the uh, dialectic constituents of the earth surface and the roughness of earth surface, the effective noise temperature will change since the input power will change. So, that is how we can map any given earth surface and it is a very popular uh, uh, it is in remote sensing application. We can monitor sea level we can monitor ice level and uh, many other things. So, this is one such application. So, antenna is directly pointing towards earth and the earth temperature physical temperature is given as 300 Kelvin. So, it is not also it is not a perfect black body because it is emis it is given by characterized by some emissivity epsilon. So, emissivity for black body equal to 1. Now, emissivity it can be given by 1 minus rho where rho is the reflectivity. So, if epsilon is 0 0.9 that means, rho is equal to 1 minus 0 0.9 which is 0 0.1. So, a good emitter is a bad reflector. This antenna is connected to a circulator by using a section of transmission line, maybe a cable or waveguide section. Starting from antenna to circulator, they are at a physical temperature given by 180 Kelvin. It is quite low, but it may happen in space. The loss of this connecting section is given as 1 dB. We also have some loss from the circulator which is given by 1 dB and look at the antenna. Antenna efficiency is 95 percent or rho e it is given as 0 0.95. Immediately after the circulator we have a low noise amplifier. So, this uh, low uh, gain of this low noise amplifier is given as 20 dB and the corresponding noise figure not factor in dB. Noise figure is 4 dB. Again we have some loss due to connecting sections that is 1 dB and next we have one mixer. It is down converting the millimeter wave signal coming from left hand side. So, for the uh, parts this LNA and the connecting cables they are at a physical temperature at 250 Kelvin, but right hand side may be they are sealed inside one package. For them they are at a thermal equilibrium of physical temperature 
400 Kelvin, it is quite high. So, just after mixer again we have a connecting section then the IF amplifier which is obviously a low frequency amplifier. So, for this low frequency amplifier noise figure is given as 3 dB gain 60 dB. Now, when we uh, convert this noise figure to noise factor obviously, uh, log base is 10 we have to take 10 to the power, but we are dealing with power not voltages. So, that means, we have to divide all these values by 10 not 20. For example, if I want to convert this 4 dB noise figure to corresponding noise factor, what we have to do 4 by 10 0.4. So, it will be 10 to the power 0.4. Now, what we have to do? We have to calculate what is the overall uh, SNR that also we can calculate if we can calculate what is the overall effective noise temperature T e of this system. So, we will start from the and uh, from the source basically before antenna we have source the earth surface. So, the earth surface temperature is given 300 Kelvin. Now, what happened you see if I look at the power whatever received by antenna some part is due to emission due to the earth itself and another part which is coming from the dwelling uh, radiation from atmosphere that is being reflected by the earth surface and coming to antenna. But since its rho is 0.1 it is a poor reflector and looking at the roughness of earth surface we are simply neglecting that reflected power part. It is in practice also it is negligibly small. We will be considering then only the effect due to this emission from earth surface itself which is which we are considering as a gray body. So, this effective radiation will be represented uh, we will be representing by a register. So, this is the figure. So, for this part what we are doing we are considering the first part starting from earth surface to circulator which are at a physical temperature of 180 Kelvin. Now, how to calculate T external? T external is simply epsilon into T physical. So, temperature of earth surface it is given as 300 Kelvin put epsilon 0.9 T external it becomes 270 Kelvin. Uh, we are using uh, temperature approach. Now, antenna temperature T antenna. So, antenna loss is given by 1 by rho e because gain is 0 0.95 then loss it is 1 by 0.95. Then followed by antenna we have a uh, section of waveguide wave guide for which again loss is 1 dB. So, we calculate then what is the corresponding gain. So, it is 1 by 10 that is 0 0.1. So, 10 to the power 0 0.1. So, overall gain G 1 into G 2 for this two cascaded system. So, G 1 into G 2. So, G 1 you see 0 0.95, G 2 0.794, G 1 2 then it becomes 0 0.754. Now, loss L 1 2 it is simply 1 by overall gain it is 1.33. So, we calculate then T antenna it is equal to we already have seen the formula T e equal to T physical into L minus 1. So, put it there T antenna it becomes 59 Kelvin. Then the source temperature T s for these three components all together this is equal to G 1 2 multiplied by T external because you see 
the noise generated by this external source or the register, it is being propagated through antenna and that wave guiding section. So, T s equal to g 1 2 into T external plus T antenna or put the values it becomes 248 Kelvin. So, T s is 248 Kelvin. Here we did not consider any direct contribution of sunlight. Actually, sky is very cold. If you point your antenna towards earth, we will receive more power compared to if you just point your antenna to cold sky. So, cold sky temperature is typically very low, equivalent noise temperature is 50 Kelvin. So, the source part calculation is over. Next part, we have to calculate T e and hence T operating. So, we have to consider the contribution due to LNA, then the uh, connecting section, mixer, connecting section and then the I f amplifier. Oh, before that we have circulator also. So, among these mixer specification, it is given its uh, temperature ratio, you see here L equal to 5 dB, that means conversion loss is 5 dB and temperature ratio is 1.5. So, actual uh, its operating temperature is 290 multiplied by 1.5. Okay, let us take 5 minutes break, then we will continue the calculation. <coughs> 